Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, we are covering Black Christmas for the holidays. This is the original yes. one that we're covering, the one that came out in 1974. But before we go into the review, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. We are doing some repeating, and I am drinking the Republic of Tea Cranberry Blood Orange Tea. And Jess? I'm super caffeinating myself with the high calf green, or sorry, ginger mint green Republic of Tea. Tea? I don't know. What- I promise this tea isn't sponsored in the last episode. No, she just went nuts on a Black Friday sale. Yes. Well, and then, like, we had poured so much of this tea that we recorded the last episode. And we're like, well, we still have half of our tea left, so. It was chug and probably need the bathroom halfway through recording or keep on. Yep. Because we're not going to waste tea. We're not going to throw it out. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Not with this one. This is tasty. (laughs) I I do like that one. It is really good. Yep. And high caffeine. Yes. Where can you go wrong? (laughs) Yes. But for our tea steppers out there, boo yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So, Black Christmas is about this, god damn it, sorority, that house. They are celebrating Christmas and just, you know, the in and outs of college girls, you know, doing their thing. A serial killer decided to make his way into the house. I think technically he's not a serial killer. He's a mass murderer. A murderer <laughs> makes his way into the house and hides in the attic and... Just, the whole movie is people dying. There. <laughs> I'm just saying, serial killer implies cooling off period, whereas mass murder, there are several kills in a very short amount of time. Isn't it also dependent on the number of people killed? I mean, both of them have to have, you know, usually three or more kills. Yeah. For it to be mass murder or serial murder. Serial killers do have to have three or more, yes. Entertainment. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just gonna get super technical here. <laughs> Fine. So, the, you guys, you're not gonna believe my ratings for this movie. So, I gave this movie a six point five, but for a very different reason than the the previous movie, Dead End. So, this movie. This is an extremely iconic classic. Yes. For those who may not be familiar with it, it is really what started or inspired the billion, <laughs> the hundreds of movies for the slasher genre. Mm-hmm. It was because of this movie that we got Halloween, and you can definitely see where it was inspired because it's like with Halloween you see the perspective of the killer same with Black Christmas um even the same with uh, when a stranger calls yeah when a stranger calls where they're like the calls are coming from inside the house it's like when a stranger calls they copy that so it's like this movie started off so many classic movies so it's like I have to it has a special place in my heart because of that reason alone. However, it as a movie itself, I, I like the fact that it's a simple concept and it's a terrifying concept, especially if you've been uh, in that type of uh, sorority situation. But it's just kind of... 
messy. And the reason why I say that... In more ways than one. Ew. (laughs) The way that I mean is the killer doesn't really... It's hard to fear someone when they just confuse you. Yes. Because he very much... He's just uh, spouting, like, different sexual slurs and doing different voices and like very weird stuff and and honestly it kind of reminded me of like like jason if he's seeing his mother and he's like going crazy but it's like they didn't explain why he was like that at all and at least for me it's like it's strange because for horror movies you obviously don't want to be completely explained the inner workings of the killer or the monster or whatever, because that can ruin the film for you. But if you're just leaving the audience confused and being like, why the heck is he talking like that? It's like, just give us enough information. So we're like, okay, we understand he's crazy. This maybe this is why he's crazy or whatever. And then move on. So it's like, it's very much the the parts of the movie that were done very well. The s- slasher movies that came after it very much took those ideas. But the, the concepts that were messy and really weakened the movie, the, s- <laughs> the l- movies later on did not um, pass those along, which I am happy for. So it's just... And then, like, essentially my whole summary of this movie in a nutshell for entertainment is it's confusing and it's frustrating. And whenever you have those two combined, it makes it a lot more uh, difficult to enjoy the movie. Um, Like if with their powers combined, they create a background movie. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) But honestly, like if they... If they had if they had cleaned up the killer to where he is saying threatening things to them in the phone, but it's a lot easier to understand either where he's coming from or what is being said. It's not like these random voices and that whole weirdness. This movie would be maybe a 7 or a 7.5. Like oh, yeah, that alone mm-hmm. is going to make a huge difference. So it's like I hated the fact that I gave it a 6.5 because it is a classic and I want to love it. I want to like it. I want to appreciate it. And while I do appreciate bits and pieces of it. We can't appreciate it fully on a whole. Yeah, because it, it's just got those major flaws and it's really hard to get past those flaws. Yes. But yeah, that's me for entertainment. What would you rate the movie? I was not quite as nice. I really do want to give the movie higher, but it is extremely frustrating and extremely confusing. Like, to the point where I looked up the script just because, I mean, it is an older movie, so it's a little bit harder to understand what he's saying. Yeah. Especially over the phone. But I looked up the script just to see if anything made sense (laughs) from what he was saying. And a lot of it was just babble. It talked a lot about Billy, which I guess was referring to himself, and Agnes, which we never find out who that was. Maybe his mother. Maybe but... his other personality. <laughs> we but, have yeah. no idea. Yeah. No idea. There's no context there, nothing. But other times, he seems coherent enough to make like a legit obscene phone call. And another time he makes a reference to what the boyfriend said when they were having a discussion, um, him and Jess, about whether or not she should have an abortion. So I feel like if they had done more of that kind of thing, where it's um, it switches back and forth between obscene phone call and taking or him saying different things that he's heard from their conversations either over the phone or in their house i feel like that would have made it way creepier 
way more intense, way more startling and more shocking just to realize, oh my God, we had that conversation in the house. There's no way he could have known about that. How did he hear it? How does he know? Has he been outside the house in the window or whatever, watching everything? Is he in the house? Is he listening to our conversations? It seems like he's everywhere. What if he heard something outside of the house somehow? Maybe they were talking about it later or something, but he got enough of it to to put that in their head of, oh my god, he's everywhere. That would have been a lot more terrifying. And then even with... I feel like if they wanted to, they could have played the is it Peter up a little bit more. So it's like either structure the killer better or play this game on making it seem like it's Peter and then him dying. But then the killer pops out and is trying to kill the main character now. It's like that would be terrifying. Even if they left it at the same ending, if they had a bit more of that play. Yeah. And the audience knows, oh, my God, he's still there. While the characters are like, it's done, it's over, we're safe now, that would have been a lot more terrifying, too. Yep. The way it is now, it just, there's no real resolution, there's no resolve, nothing. It just feels very frustrating. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so the ending. that was just, it was very annoying. Um, there's so much stupidity in oh. the movie. I know movies got a movie. I know movies got a movie. But if you make almost every character super stupid, it makes it very uninteresting for the rest of us who want at least some common sense to play some role in it. Please. Yeah. I don't think I ever gave my rating. I give it a 5.75. Oh... Breaking out the the quarter points now. I did. It's not quite a 5.5. It is better than that. But I can't quite bring myself to give it a 6. I want to, but there's just too much in it that I'm like, no. (laughs) So I just... It's just too distracting. It's too confusing. It's too frustrating. And there's no resolution at all. Even yeah. in a bad way. There's yeah. no resolution. So I just, I can't give it higher. Yeah. I can't. It's so frustrating. It's like, yeah. with with like Halloween, the way that it's left open, it makes it creepy. But mm-hmm. this, it's just like, it feels like you didn't even have a story to conclude. It yes. just, a story, and they just like sliced it open, mm-hmm. and they're like, that's it. That's that's all you get. It's and you're like, what? Like <laughs> they wanted to make a sequel and then never did. It was there, almost like a series. There actually might be a sequel. There might be, but I, I haven't heard remember. of it. So if there is one, it probably didn't do well. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. Most of the issues that I have, though, are apart from that with the realism scale. So yes. if you want to go yes. ahead and slide yes. into that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you'll notice or have noticed a lot more things than I did, but I give the realism a 3.5. And the reason being is, well, okay, I'll, before I talk about the main character, the, the quick points is whenever he stabs the the girl with the the fringe that was sleeping and had asthma what was her name do you remember i am just as bad with names as you are okay well <laughs> she was sleeping and the guy it was it was the girl with the potty mouth the boozer yeah, yeah. and when he he grabs a glass unicorn and stabs her with the horn i'm sorry Glass, it's very unlikely that the glass would have held out. It's like, yes, maybe it would have punctured her, but would have, like, maybe shattered inside her. Like, I can't imagine. Especially hitting bone, yes. It would have at least cracked or a part of it would have splintered or fractured off. Yeah. And it wouldn't have been intact. And the fact that he got, he was able to repeatedly stab her. 
And it's like, it was, I will admit, it was a cool effect to show, like, the blood on the glass. Mm -hmm. Like, that was cool looking. It's very artsy. But uh, realism, nope, not going to happen. The other thing that was really frustrating is the fact, and I guess you could say this is made the movie more realistic because this has happened before. Yeah, countless cases of this, unfortunately, is the cops not taking Jess seriously whenever she's reporting concerns about the phone calls. Uh, it, it takes a few tries and then finally they're like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll help you with this. But especially with them being so close to a college area, I think it's completely uh, expected to be like, oh, our friend Claire is missing. And they're like, oh, well, she's probably up in a cabin with her boyfriend or whatever. And on the one hand, it's really frustrating But there are, unfortunately, cases where people go missing. They're reported is like these people are known to be dependable, but the police don't know that. And they just assume the that they're they're off being, uh, you know, off on a cabin or 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 whatever. Promiscuous. Promiscuous. Um, But besides that, my biggest complaint definitely is Jess and her stupidity. Especially towards the end, whenever it will. Okay, the cop was terrible at telling her to get out. He's like, don't ask any questions. Just go out. And it's like, she is stupid to ask the questions. But anyways, he he could have been like, oh, I I just don't want to concern you. But uh, cops on the way. Can you please meet him outside? Or or the cop in the front is going to meet. Just say whatever you need to say, but get her outside into it yes but the fact that like once she figured out he was in the house her reaction was oh i'm going to grab a a fireplace poker and walk around i'm sorry the cops that well she doesn't know that the cop outside is dead but so uh, she know or she believes that he's alive he's gonna have a gun and be able to de-escalate, de-escalate the situation hopefully a lot better than she can. It, it was, Even if she <sighs> was with him. Yeah, it was... Even if not, the cop was alive and she went back in the house with him, which he, he probably went, would yeah. have insisted she stay outside so she's out of the way and not potentially getting shot herself. Yeah. But still. Yeah, it's just... That was the part of the movie that... If nothing else, have him call for backup. Was the the most frustrating, so... I give it a three. You were hey, close. we're pretty close. We were very close. Yay. Yes. I give it a three. I could see the situation, for the most part, happening, where a guy somehow manages to sneak in. That was a little iffy to me, honestly. That he was able to get in with nobody noticing. Because sorority houses, I mean, it's it's a huge house with a bunch of girls in it. Yeah. And they were just having a party. So maybe he snuck in with other guests. Like other guys. Because there were guys coming in and out of there, too. It was party. It was like a mixer kind of thing. So maybe he got in that way. There's a lot of maybes there. It just seemed a little... Hmm, yeah. Just like barely gets a pass kind of thing. Um, but then him being in the attic with no one really hearing anything, no one investigating, nothing like that. And I can't see the phone calls coming from in the house when they said they only had two phones in the house. The one in like the common area downstairs near the front door and the one in the house mother's room. So where was he making the phone calls from? If it was in the house mother's room, how did no one see him going in and out of there? Yeah. And how did no one hear him ever during any of these calls when there are girls going all over the house during the same time these calls are being made? Yep. Or when there's no one else in the house, just the one girl at the time, and him making a phone call. House's echo. <laughs> Yeah. So unless they got some super soundproof rooms, which I doubt, 
You're going to hear something. <laughs> yeah. I also don't understand how he was making multiple voices at the same time. Because there were times when you'd hear almost like a female type voice screaming or yelling or something in the background-ish while he's talking or making other sounds. So, in a lower register. So it doesn't make sense how he was able to make the multiple sounds. And a lot of these calls, again, were loud. And you would definitely have heard it. Yeah, I know some of the calls... Are, well, I know one call for sure was him killing a victim and calling her at the same time. But it's like the other calls, they don't explicitly explain... Well, it sounds like it is that kind of thing. But again, how is he on the phone? Because they I don't think they had cordless phones at the time, did they? No. So, how was he on a corded phone and able to record or have that on there while killing her with plastic in her closet? Yeah. But we heard no plastic. Yeah. It doesn't line up. <laughs> it just doesn't add up and it doesn't make sense and it annoys me greatly. <laughs> well, I don't know if the any of the screens was specifically Claire, but cuz it's like he was like, for example, the cop was telling him, oh, we called the hospital and they don't have room for all of the bodies we have. But it was only like two people because they didn't know about the two in the attic. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, he must have killed Plus more girls. Girl. Huh? Plus the little girl that was found in the park. Yeah, but that that's only three bodies. Yeah. Like a hospital would have room for that. Oh, yeah. Um. So in my mind, because in the beginning of the movie, you see a bunch of girls. So I think... Maybe off screen he killed a lot more people, and that's where, like, maybe he lured them into that room. I mean, it, it's it's speculation at this point. Like, yeah, they don't that, prove that doesn't or... make that much sense either because they said a lot of the girls had actually headed out for the break to go that's spend true. Christmas with their family. That's true. Like they were leaving after the party to go to their families. Yeah. So, uh, this yeah, it's a lot of contradictions and yes. questions with this movie for yes. sure it's like with halloween it's so simple it's that it's cut. hard to ask a bunch of questions but yes. this one it should be a simple story but they decided to add all these additional elements yes. that make it all muddy mm -hmm. and that's why the movie isn't nearly as good as it could be is yes. it's muddy it's messy the things that they do with it make it not as strong as it should be yeah it could have been a super strong message, super strong movie. It should have been one of the ones at the forefront. Instead, we get things like Halloween or When a Stranger Calls or Friday the 13th, where they yeah. take just certain elements of it and make it better. Yeah. <laughs> like it should have been. Yeah. But um, I do see... The uh, police not being able to really do much for the obscene phone call, especially if mm -hmm. it's their first time hearing about it. If you log it multiple times, even if you just keep a record of it yourself first and then go up there and say, we have now started to log when we've gotten these calls and when they end, who takes the calls and all of that? Here's what we have so far. Make it stop. <laughs> Like, figure out a way to make it stop. That way they have some record of this is not a one-time prank call kind of thing. This is an ongoing issue. Or if you call them after it happens every time, hey, we just got an, another obscene phone call. It sounds like the same guy. It lasted about this long. These people are our witnesses. That way they have something on file, something on record to show that it is a multiple occurring thing and yeah. not just a one-off. Because if you get one obscene phone call, yes, it's gross and it sucks and it's stupid and juvenile, but it probably won't happen again. If it does happen multiple times, there's an issue. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But they can't really do much about it if they only hear about it once. Yep. So I, I do see that. I also see them not being able to look into much about the supposed disappearance of a girl on campus. 
as concerning as that is, they usually aren't able to really start looking into it until the person's been missing for 48 hours. Well, Which sucks because that's like the most crucial time. Well, yeah, that's actually a myth. Oh, is it? Yeah, that okay. they don't. Um, yeah, I listened to, <laughs> I I listened to this podcast called Anatomy of Murder, and it uh, done. It's hosted by a prosecutor and a former New York detective, and both of them said as soon as a person is missing, and you know it's unusual, report it. It doesn't yeah. matter the length of time, and actually because of that myth, it's caused a lot of people, unfortunately, to die mm -hmm. when if if they had reported it that much sooner, as soon as they knew that the person was gone, it would have saved their life. Good to know. So, yeah. The more you know. Yep. But... It is also difficult, and I, again, can see them being like, well, most college kids that go missing are usually shacking up with their significant other, boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, they're just off with their friends. They haven't come back yet. They had just had an argument, and she went upstairs, and no one had seen her since. So it could have been that she went out to cool off, and nobody had seen her leave. Or she was at a coffee shop or something and just hadn't told anyone, lost track of time, and just kept missing her dad. Like, they have no way of knowing if it was something like that. Or if she went for a drive, if she had a car, and was just cooling off somewhere. They have no way of knowing. Yeah. It's usually something completely innocuous, so they don't usually take it too seriously, unless there are other suspicious circumstances. Well, I think, you know... At that time period, that's definitely that definitely mm -hmm. was the case. But nowadays, with cell phones, I feel like that's oh, definitely yeah. a lot less the case. Oh yeah, because it's like yes. even if you you don't show up, you can text the person, say mm -hmm. what's going on. But it's like if you're repeatedly blah, 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 if you're repeatedly calling someone, they're not answering, mm -hmm. but they're normally one of those people that like responds yes like immediately. Constantly then you know has their phone on them. Yeah, then you know something's probably yes. going on. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. Yes. So, um, but at that time, I could easily see them being like, wait a couple of days, she'll show up, it'll be fine. Yeah. So, and they were trying to tell them, the police, that this is not normal for her. She's always very punctual. She was looking forward to spending time with her family. She had told everybody that she was going to be there to meet her dad at this place at this time, and she was not there. And no one has seen her since the night before. It sucks that they didn't really listen to that. Yeah. Until the detective was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Good on that detective. Yes. But they did have to really raise a stink before then. And unfortunately, I can't see that happening. So that was yeah. unfortunately realistic. Um, I'm not entirely sure how switchboards worked. <laughs> Yeah, can't can't comment, can't on, comment that. on that one. <laughs> I do feel like it would have taken a while for them to figure out that it was coming from the house. So good on you there. I feel like with the the guys that randomly showed up trying to warn them of you know make sure you lock your doors and windows. That um, that's kind of creepy though. That was very creepy. I feel like I wouldn't have opened the door. No, for sure. I would I not. Especially they when they peek through the window. Yeah. I'm like, hell no! You're I don't know why they opened the door at all. Why they didn't just you know yell through the door? Yeah, and be like yeah, no, this door's not opening. Yeah, but especially when they're worried about you know there was a murder of a little girl. There's their friend is missing. Yeah, like, plus, why did you open the door at all? And one of them has a gun. <laughs> yes, that's what I was thinking. And the way he was holding it, yes. it was so intimidating. Like Elmer Fudd over here. Yeah, <laughs> like, he could easily just, like, turn and be like, let me in. Yeah, no. Just, uh... No, yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. So, also, it took them two idiots, one of them with a gun, for them to be like, you know what? They're right. Maybe we should lock all the doors and windows. <laughs> It was the time and probably the area. Okay, but again, a little girl has been murdered. Their friend is missing. There's a cop watching their house. That's true. The papers are going crazy. I know. <laughs> you did this. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so, there's a cop watching the house. So, I mean, lock the dang doors <laughs> and windows 
don't give whoever it is an easy in to the house that you're trying to keep fortified as a safe place. Yes. I also don't understand how the girlfriend Jess uh, mistook her boyfriend as the killer when they made it a point to show the audience that the boyfriend's eyes were like super light blue. Like clear blue. And when you see the guy's eye, creepy enough, like this is one of the creepiest scenes in the entire movie, through the crack in the door after she discovers a couple of her sorority sisters dead in the room, you see there's a lot of brown. A lot of brown. His voice also sounds different. (laughs) Whispering or no. Yeah. So I don't understand how she was like, it's definitely him. Well, and then she had discounted it was him. And then she like reconvinced herself it was yep. him. And it's like, I understand whenever yeah. you have adrenaline, it's really hard to recall those types of details. Yeah. But it's a stressful situation. But I mean, they were close enough that she was pregnant. So, she knows his voice. She knows what eye color he has. Like, you can tell through the crack in the door, even if it's just a little sliver of face here, just tiny little eye staring at you creepily, whispering sweet horror things (laughs) at you, (laughs) that it is not. (laughs) You stole that from me. (laughs) It's not the boy toy. (laughs) Well, and then plus, like, he was so adverse to her having an abortion. Why yeah. would he decide to murder her? That yeah, doesn't make no, any sense. That made no sense whatsoever. Like, and even so... if you're super upset about it, I could imagine if he was really yeah. that loony that he would murder her after she had an abortion. But while she's pregnant... Bit of a stretch, but I could see that, yes. I- I'm just saying, like, yeah, if he was going to kill it. someone yes. or kill her. I get yeah. it. And he probably wouldn't have gone off on every other girl that was in the sorority house at the time. Yep. So it just didn't make sense at all in that way. And what you were saying, what we had talked about before uh, the recording as well, when she got the call, one, the cop was stupid and mentioned it to her. He could have said a billion other things to get her out of the goddamn house without mentioning that the killer was in it. Because a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people would be the noble kind of person, the loyal friend that's like, you know what, I need to get my friends out of here too. So why take the chance, officer dumb, and tell the person that the killer's in there? No. Well, I don't know. It's like, even if I was trying to save my friends... My logical leap would still be to go out to the cops yes. because they're going to be able to do more than me Get with a freaking like fire. Get the person who's trained thing. for this kind of situation. Yes. Get out there, tell the officer, hey, I need some help in here. <laughs> Can you go get my friends and bring them out here, please? Yeah. And again, even if she went with him against what she should do and went with him, then at least she would have gotten back up someone with a gun for backup that's been trained for this kind of scenario. Now, the audience knows that the cop outside is dead, but she wouldn't know that. But at least then she would have had a gun, too. Yep. (laughs) Even if she went out there and discovered that the cop is dead, she could have taken his gun. Yep. And the movie would have been over. (laughs) Possibly. You know how movies do. But it just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I understand that they wouldn't have found the bodies because of the smell in the attic yet. Because it does. We looked it up. It takes <laughs> the things we look up for this show. It takes thank a you, couple Ask of days. Yes, thank uh, you, Ask and the SciShow. <laughs> yes. It takes a couple of days at least um, in open air for a body to start to smell. Um, now it might be a little bit different in the enclosed attic that they were in with probably stagnant air, but it wouldn't have been too far off. It probably would have still been around the two to three days or so before it really starts to smell and starts to travel. 
Um, gross, but there it is. <laughs> and, um, so I get that. What I don't understand is, again, movie portraying cops is super stupid and not doing a thorough sweep of the house. I know they think that they got the guy. Still doesn't make that much sense because she had already ruled him out as a suspect earlier. But whatever. They didn't do a thorough sweep. They they got into the basement because that's where she was. And that's where her dead boyfriend was. And they saw the other two sorority girls in the room that the guy had been peeking through the crack in. But they don't decide to check the rest of the house, including the attic, just for good measure. Really? It's just incompetence like this that really bugs me. Like, there are procedures for this. And I know they said that the state forensics would be there in like an hour. Which means that not all of them would have left. Or if they did, which it did show them all pulling out away from the house, which also didn't make sense. They just left her. Yeah, it just, it doesn't make sense. And she's going to have some trauma and they're going to need a statement from her anyway. So they wouldn't have left her. Yep. At all. They would have had at least a couple of guys there. But again, no resolution. You know he's in the attic still. And you see the two bodies are still there and they're going to stink in a couple of days. And this all happened in like the span of a day and a half. But... <laughs> yep. Well, overall, I think since it is a classic, I think it's worth the watch. It is. But there are better ones out there, but it is worth a watch. Yes. It's a classic, and so I think it should be appreciated as like the the iconic original or one of the original slasher movies. But if you're not a huge fan of the movie, don't be upset because we're not either. Which sucks because it's like I do really want to like it. But it's just compared I to... want to, but do better. <laughs> yes, like compared to the movies that came after it, it just... Yep. But... I mean, we've said it before. We've said it before and I'll say it again. If you do everything right, but they're still able to get to you... That's far more terrifying than being dumb, <laughs> being stupid, and then getting at you over and over and over again. It yeah. really is. Because you know you've done everything you possibly can to stay out of the situation, and they're still able to get to you. That is terrifying. Yep. But, well, thank you guys for joining us today and let us know what you thought of the movie. And if you would like to recommend a movie to us or tea or blah, 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 and you would <laughs> like to keep up to date with their content, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and most places that you can listen to podcasts. Yes. And if you'd like to support our podcast, please like and share our content. And we also have a Teespring if you'd like to support us monetarily. And everything is mentioned in the links below. Our tease where you can watch the movie and everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. And until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.